experience, a very fruitful and a very learning experience in this course. And also it gives me immense pleasure to welcome and also it's an honor to welcome our distinguished speaker, Professor Pramod Varshne. Professor Pramod Varshne, of course, all of you must be familiar with Cognitive Radio and uh, Professor Pramod Varshne, we went already, I mean, no Professor Pramod Varshne, several of his works, right, is one of the world renowned experts on Cognitive Radio. His research interests are varied. So I'll go through, of course, all of you know Professor Pramod Varshne, but let me formally introduce him to you. That's uh, my duty, one of my duties as the coordinator for this course. So, Professor Pramod Varshne is, in fact, you'll be happy, he's from Allahabad, born and brought up in Allahabad, born on July 1st, 1952. He received all his degrees, Bachelor of Science, MS, and PhD degrees from the UIUC, that's the University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, in 1972, 74, and 1976, respectively. And following that, he has had a distinguished career as a faculty member at Syracuse University, where he has been since 1976. And he has held, uh, in between, of course, 1972 to 1976, he has held several teacher, teaching and research assistantships. Since 1976, he has been with Syracuse University, which is in New York, and he is currently a distinguished professor of electrical and computers, electrical engineering and computer science, and also the director of CASE, which is the Center for Advanced Systems and Engineering. He served as an associate chair of the department during 1993 to 96. He is also an adjunct professor in upstate uh, of radiology in upstate medical university Syracuse. As you see, his interests are very varied. Is from all the way from signal processing, communications to radiology. There is a lot of applications from signal processing, I believe. And his current research interests are in distributed sensor networks, data fusion. In fact, his area of expertise is fusion, wireless sensor networks, one of the most fundamental. I mean, he's authored one of the most seminal books and also several seminal works in the areas of sensor fusion. And um, he has published extensively, of course, extensive is an understatement, it's very, very extensively. I mean, one has to simply look at his publication record. He's the author of the book, as I said, Distributed Detection and Data Fusion, which has been published by Springer Verlag in 1997, which is considered to be one of the seminal works on data fusion and distributed detection and sensing, right? So, and his awards are, of course, numerous. I'll just give a brief glimpse of you. While at the University of Illinois, he was a James Collar, a bronze tablet senior and a fellow. Is a member of Tau Beta Phi and is a recipient of the 1981 ASEE Dow Outstanding Young Faculty Award. He was elected to the grade of Fellow of IEEE in 1997 for his contributions in the area of distributed detection and data fusion. In 2000, received the third Millennium Medal from IEEE and the Chancellor's Citation for Exceptional Academic Achievement at Syracuse University. He is the recipient of the IEEE 2012. Judith A. Resnick Award, an honorary doctorate also from Drexel University followed. He is on the editorial boards of several prestigious journals, few of them the Journal of Advances in Information Fusion, the IEEE Signal Processing Magazine. He was the president of the International Society of Information Fusion during 2001. And again, it is with great pleasure and honor that we all welcome, let us all welcome Professor Pramod Varshne to take over and start conducting course models. Let us give him a round. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for being here. It is our privilege. And with that, extremely generous introduction. Uh, it was too long. I mean, it took away from the content of the course. Uh, so as he said, I mean, I grew up uh, not too far from here. So it's a pleasure to be here. And I'm glad that all of you are here. Uh, I think you've traveled from many parts of the country. Uh, and uh, so it's good to be here. So Professor Jagannatham suggested that uh, I talk about the university that I'm at for a couple of minutes, the college. Uh, so anyway, so I'm uh, at, uh, so I spent, I mean, I uh, grew up uh, in Allahabad and then left for the US. I was 16 or 17 years old. Uh, and then uh, that's a good thing. Uh, went to the University of Illinois, which is uh, in Urbana-Champaign, state of Illinois. And uh, I completed, so I had done my BSc from Allahabad University. And then I transferred into the engineering program there. And in those days, uh, not too many, well, in fact, I was probably the only uh, undergraduate student who was there from over, overseas in the College of Engineering, which had thousands of students. And uh, so I basically uh, went into overdrive. I had to do, I think I did 76 credit hours in 20 months along with holding a part-time job. So you could, I guess, uh, imagine what 
uh, I did during that period. But anyway, then after that, graduate school was easier. I mean, only th four courses a semester or three courses a semester. As an undergrad, it was eight of them per semester. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so then after graduation, I joined Syracuse University. Syracuse is in the state of New York, and it's not near New York City. We are uh, about 400 kilometers or so from the city. I'm closer to the, city, uh, the capital of Canada, Ottawa, than to New York City. So uh, that's where I am, and then we have, uh, I mean, uh, a very, I mean, comprehensive university. Uh, and within that comprehensive, by that I mean that we have uh, nations number one or two public policy program, and then we have uh, uh, journalism and radio and TV. Newhouse School of uh, that. Uh, so they're very famous uh, broadcasters that have come through there and so on. Uh, college of Engineering and Computer Science, uh, it's a relatively small college within the entire university. We have four departments and these are the, uh, uh, I guess, some numbers as to how many BS programs within the college, how many students and so on. Uh, the research focus areas that uh, we have, I guess some of them are relevant to you and those would be the first two. Uh, cyber security. So basically these focus areas means that we have a critical mass, six or more faculty members uh, working in those areas. And uh, so cognitive, so I actually I work in both cyber security a little bit and cognitive wireless I do much more. Uh, I also, I mean, collaborate with others in different departments and so on. So that is something just to begin with, uh, since many of you are uh, beginning your careers. Uh, maybe this is, uh, since it is a Gyan course, I should give you some Gyan. Uh, and basically what that means is that uh, you ought to get out of your cubicles or your little cubby hole and you need to get out and talk to others within your own department but also outside the department because that way what you can do is you can uh, solve big problems uh, because if you are just by yourself you will be able to solve small problems, tweak something and publish a paper and here and there but if you really want to make an impact you have to really go out and uh, 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 work with others and really solve interdisciplinary problems and so on. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, uh, this is something that I guess uh, I, uh, it was, I borrowed these slides from my uh, Dean of Engineering, so these are her slides. But one thing that uh, is happening in Syracuse area is that uh, uh, the state is providing uh, close to $250 million for setting up a center for UAVs, unmanned air systems. So all the YouTube videos that you see about pizza being delivered by uh, drones and so on, uh, I mean, there are regulations and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, I guess here also there are regulations. People tend not to follow them, I guess, here or elsewhere, even uh, wherever they are. Uh, but the point is that um, the center that we are setting up, that will be for certification of uh, your drones. So people, companies, and vendors, they can bring their uh, drone, and then we will have a huge $100 million facility, a huge dome, where we can create many types of conditions, wind and all kinds of things and for testing. So I mean, so, so in a big way, I mean, that's an industry that uh, we want to uh, uh, go after. Uh, there are, I mean, biomedical and chemical engineering department. Uh, let me just move on. I guess uh, this will be of more interest to you because all of you are ECS. So uh, basically, I mean, the uh, research areas in the department if some of you are looking for uh, uh, doctoral studies uh, down the road or if your students are looking for those then um, uh, I mean we have folks uh, intelligent systems and data mining cognitive wireless cyber security energy means that smart grid uh, that is picking up steam and hardware design and computer architecture uh, we have like new initiatives which is MS and cyber security and uh, so there are many things that uh, we have and uh, uh, I don't know what else is out there. Uh, basically, I mean we have a very active uh, uh, department and we have very active uh, folks uh, like Tapan Sarkar, he was the president of Antennas and Propagation Society recently, IEEE. Uh, many NSF career award winners. So we have a very strong group and especially in uh, 
the uh, wireless area, there are at least six faculty members and other than me, all five are NSF Career Award winners. So uh, I'm the only one who doesn't have that distinction. Uh, anyway, so I can go uh, and then if, uh, should I talk about, I mean, the, a little bit more about the department, I mean, who is out there? So this is just the EECS department. So, I mean, basically, a few people that I want to emphasize, I mean, this fellow Makan Fardad, he's a brilliant uh, uh, controls person, and then I work with him quite a bit on uh, resource allocation and controls sparsity and so on. So he's a very strong person. Uh, Ingbin Liang, world class, I mean, just top notch. Uh, 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 individual, I mean, in uh, machine learning and information theory and uh, physical layer security. Uh, Chillukudi Mohan, I have to mention that he is uh, uh, from the first batch of computer science graduates from Kanpur, so I have to mention his name. Uh, then there are, I mean, many others uh, who are doing things in uh, Veer Poha, this is, he's a very interesting individual. He has had lots of uh, funding from FBI and DARPA and so on. And the kinds of work that he does, it's almost scary that uh, uh, if I have my smartphone and I, if I'm entering my PIN and if there is a camera somewhere, then with over 90% to 95% uh, correct uh, probability of correct this thing, he can find out what my pin is, what I was doing. <laughs> so it's scary what he does, but these are the kinds of things that people are doing. Reza uh, Zafrani. Uh, so this is the wireless group, Biao Chen. I mean, he does massive MIMO and all that, so he would be a good person that uh, I guess we should try to talk to. Uh, then Makan Farda, Jeng Gursa, he's working on uh, uh, 5G, I mean, things, millimeter wave and stuff. We'll talk about, uh, not the, for, about him, but about some of the technologies. Uh, Jian Tang is cloud computing, and Sanam Velipsala, she is in wireless sensor, meaning camera networks. So, I mean, uh, and especially those, um, uh, the uh, uh, computing is included within the camera. So, a lot of that, so you don't transmit too much because these are battery driven uh, things, and you want to do processing at the se sensor itself. Something interesting, I guess I'm taking too much time, but let me continue since. Uh, uh, the main thing is that if you have the mic, people don't give up. So uh, that's the good thing that I just uh, uh, want to take full advantage, I guess. So she is look, doing a project and uh, because there is like um, privacy issues are there that uh, if I'm walking into a building and there are cameras, then they are actually they know who I am, what I do and so on. So this one, what she has done is that you uh, put cameras here on yourself so you are looking at, at the things rather than pe other, other other way around so basically you go around and then the uh, the uh, uh, what you are capturing you use that to try to infer and one ap application is elderly so if they fall down then there are i mean the video that comes from that you figure out if the person is falling down and then there could be an alert that could go out to wherever. So that's, uh, that kind of thing is something quite interesting. I do uh, talk, uh, tell her that, yeah, sure, your privacy is okay, but how about the other people because you are seeing other people. But anyway, so that's some, an interesting thing. It, this is not body camera, this is, I mean, like an embedded camera that on the belt, uh, that's the experiments that she, I think so. Uh, no, that is something else, but that could also be used as long as you are wearing it and you are looking outside. So the privacy concern is gone, but then the other issues are there. I mean, other people's privacy, but I guess nobody, <laughs> she, uh, anyway, so that's her selling point. And we have actually written a paper together recently related to that. Cyber security we do and electromagnetics we do a lot. Uh, uh, energy, energy sources, etc. So let me just uh, uh, stop that here.